We do this show every year, so we're doing it again. It's categorical scarcity. At what points in the draft do you need to prioritize which stats? I'm not sure if that's good English, but I don't care because I've got Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy, your daily NBA fantasy podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and my number one pick for fantasy is your mum. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore beeble on TikTok at redrock underscore beeble and on Instagram at locked on fantasy basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, use the code locked on NBA and get $20 off your first purchase. Easy. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms to so give a thumb up and a double bang. Easy done. Now, yesterday we did some arguing shows, some mock drafts. Yeah, that's that's good. And the last one we did was with Robin Marks. We were talking about points leagues. And I was saying the majority of my content that I do, it, it covers everything. It is not category specific. It is not point specific. It covers everything. This one, for those of you who play points leagues, does not apply with a single ounce of anything to you. If you are in a points league, watch it. Cool. I might have a joke or two. I can't promise. They're just, it's freestyle. But this is not about you. Don't look at this part. Don't look at this show and go, yes, oh, well, I'm drafting in a points league and it's really important that I get this at this point. It doesn't matter. It it will make it worse for you. You draft the guy with more fantasy points. That is what you do. You don't worry about categorical scarcity. It does not apply in a points league. I'll say this again. Watch it. It might be fun. It might be interesting. It might get you interested in playing a category league. It might make you say, why would I want that extra effort? And that is cool as well. But do not use the information in this show, Points League players, to influence your draft. It will screw you up. Do not do it. Category League players, unbelievably vital that you listen to every word that I say and do exactly as I say at every single point. Of course, that's not true, but just this is important. This gives you an idea of how we prioritize things. The way we look in drafts, about what do we do? Like, does a ranking matter? The guy's 30th versus 31st, 33rd, 34th. You know the answer is no, it doesn't. It's about finding the right stats at the right point, seeing where things move and drop and become available so you can actually do the things that you need to do. We're going to base this on the standard format of leagues, which is 12 teams, but it's relatively applicable across any size because we're just talking sort of groups of 12 players as to where the stats move up and down. I'm including the major categories plus an additional six categories that often are used. I I would just suggest usually just doing standard, but I'm going to include the ones that get often used. Field goals made, terrible category. Free throws made, terrible category. Um, Double doubles, terrible category. Three-point percentage, pretty good category. Assist to turnover ratio, decent decent enough category. Uh, Offensive and defensive rebounds, decent enough. All right, but we include all of those and see where they lie and if there's changes and what's harder and what's easier to get when we're doing our drafts, if we're including those. The other format part of this I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the top three hardest to get regular standard categories and then the top three easiest to get standard categories. And we're going to start off looking at every sort of like small half round chunk and then we'll just do full rounds to see where it goes. That explanation, I think, I think it makes sense. I'll chuck this across again. This is categorical scarcity. We're talking about what categories are appearing and disappearing and easier and harder to get at points in the draft. So I I thought the best place to start instead of pick six in round one was like the first four. That is how they're going to go. Now, whether that's right or not, doesn't matter. It's going to be Wemby. It's going to be Jokic. It's going to be Luka. It's going to be Shea in nearly every single draft. That will be the top four picks. That is almost guaranteed not to be the top four finishes at the end of the season, but it is going to be the top four picks. And that's cool as well. If you pick someone fourth, Shay, and he finishes seventh, Shay, it's okay. It's not that bad. It's, it's totally good. But they are going to be the top four guys. So I wanted to look to see what would happen after those four guys were off the board. And I'm going to give you one of the biggest spoilers ever. We are five minutes into this show. At least watch through to the ads. 
But I'll tell you right now that at every single point when we do this, the hardest category to get any sort of above average contributor is points. That is the hardest category to get for every portion of the draft. It is just hard to do. The top point scorers are at the top of the draft. They, it just becomes very hard to get that category. That has been the case time immemorial for at least the last 10 years that I've been doing this. If you want to be competitive in points, you need to get them early. If you are a team that really cares about your turnovers, you will be low in points and you will not be competitive in them unless you'd luck your way into a couple of key guys later rounds. This is a truth of fantasy basketball. So, I'll just show you if you are watching on YouTube the layout of how this screen looks. Underneath my head are the other categories in order from hardest to get, starting at hardest to get from the left, moving through to easiest to get. So, at this point of the draft, the hardest thing to get is free throws made, followed by double-doubles, field goals made, defensive rebounds, assist to turnovers, three-point percentage, and offensive rebounds at this point of the draft after four picks are the easiest to get. Just so that is what that is. I won't reference that list very often, but if you include any of those numbers, just know that that is the hard-to-easy run. On the right-hand side, under where it says pick five, the top three there are the harder-to-get categories. The top one is the hardest, second hardest, third hardest. Then there's a red dividing line. And these are the abundant stats. And the top one there is the easiest to get, followed by the second easiest and the third easiest. So after those first four are off the board, Jokic, Wemby, Shea, and Luka, or just to put it in another order, Luka, Shea, Wemby, Jokic, whatever, it's the top four. This is how we go. Points are the hardest to get. Assists are the second hardest to get. Next spoiler, assists remain the second hardest category to get all the way through as well. Again, the counter to turnovers. And rebounds are the third hardest to get after these first four picks. Now, rebounds go up and down all the way through the draft. They become hard. They become easy. They're all over the place. And that's because, and you've seen it in nearly every mock draft I've done, is that there's a run. There's a whole, oh my God, eight centers went in 10 picks. And that obliterates rebounds. And then they don't go. And they push back up. I should have mentioned this at the start, but because I didn't plan it, I'll mention it now. How I'm determining what is happening at pick five and pick 13 and pick 19 is I just looked at Yahoo's X rank. And I went through and just drafted as if that was how it would be drafted. Now, of course, that's not how a draft would go. But how could I possibly know how a draft would go? It's going to vary every time. But I think this gives the best idea of us understanding that at the end of two rounds, the top 24 x rank players are gone. And here is what is left. It's not going to be that way. This is all fuzzy because your league will differ slightly. But it gives you an, a general overview. And again, the pattern of all of this holds true all the time. But it does, an important refresher is here. Well, I think it's important. The most abundant stat after your first four picks is three-pointers. And that would make sense because Shea's not a three-point volume guy. Uh, Jokic isn't a three-point volume guy. Wimby's okay at it. And Luca is. But threes can be found. We know we can get two threes per game, 2.2 threes per game off the waiver wire. It's easy to do. Blocks is the second most um, abundant, which is very weird because Wimby has gone there. But the other three guys are not high block players. But Wemby does account for a lot of blocks, but all your other shot blockers are still available. And then field goal percentage is also available after those first three picks. That's the three most abundant. Threes, blocks, and field goal percentage. So that's your first, that, that's the setup. That's the, the idea of the show. That's what happens after those first four are off the board. And then we are going to fly back in and talk about the rest of the rounds in the draft. Today's episode, though, is brought to you by the Game Time app. When you are looking for tickets to an event, what an amazing thing that is. Going to an event, you want to get there, the live concerts, you want to go to sporting events, you want to see the playoffs. Playoffs? You want to get down to Petco Park, maybe. And maybe, who see? We'll see what happens if the Padres can uh, close it out today. Don't know. But Game Time Picks, thanks to Game Time, enables you to save that time and money. Instead of worrying about wading through all of the different ticket options they have for each event, Game Time Picks cuts it through. It cuts through the fluff. It brings the sizzle to the top and it shows you the good ticket options. And that's not all. That's, that's the new thing. That's the main good thing they've got at the moment. But flash deals exist. Prices drop closer to game time. All in pricing. Turn that on in the app. So when you're looking at the tickets, you just see the full price. You don't get surprised with a transaction fee or anything like that later on. You've got the zone deals. You just pick an area. They choose a seat. You save some money. Lowest price guarantee. 
It's there on game time as well. There are just so many different things that they offer. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code L O C K E D O N N B A for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. Okay, so. We've seen what happens after the first four picks are gone. What about after the first round? The top 12 x rank players in Yahoo, what happens when they are off the board? How does the abundance change? Well, it doesn't. It doesn't really. We're up, sitting there at pick 13. We're ready to go. The hardest category to get is points. The second hardest is assists. You're going to get sick of me saying that. And the third hardest to get is rebounds. The easiest to get is threes. The second easiest to get is blocks. The third easiest to get is field goal percentage. Similar sort of stuff on the other categories. It's free throws made, then double-doubles, field goals made, defensive rebounds, assist to turnover, offensive rebounds, and three-point percentage. That's all relatively straightforward stuff. We are maintaining the pattern. Halfway through this round, which I thought in the early rounds we'd do six pick chunks, so we're sitting there at pick 19, Is are there changes? And in this one, yeah, there are, interestingly enough. Points and assists, you'll be shocked to know, are the two hardest categories to get, but steals comes harder there. And that's largely because someone like a Donovan Mitchell goes in that 12 to 13 range. And Donovan Mitchell is a um, yeah, player that averaged a lot of steals last season, and he goes in that area. So we're talking about the players that go in that area. Curry, Mitchell, Booker, Sabonis, Ball, and Brunson. So Ball, big steals guy. Mitchell, big steals guy. And it changes it. And as you'll note, all those guys, Curry, Mitchell, Booker, Sabonis, Ball, and Brunson, all of them apart from Sabonis, are guards. So the most abundant stats are after pick 18, so at pick 19, are blocks. None of those guys block shots. Field goal percentage and rebounds. So rebounds went from the third easiest to get, or third hardest to get, to the third easiest because you just lost a lot of guards off the board there outside of Sabonis. The... Other categories remain very similar. Free throws made is the hardest to get. Double doubles is the second hardest. And you can see the rest of the order there if you want to check it out. But that hasn't really changed uh, much at all from where we did it the first time. We are now two rounds in. So we're sitting there at the beginning of round three. You picked Wembenyama or Jokic at pick one. You've had your second round pick and now you're ready to go up pick 25. What do you do? What is the rarity looking like? Well, guess what? The most hardest to get category is points. The second hardest category to get is assists. What a shock that is. And if you do have women Yama at pick one, as you can see, assists are hard to get. Punting assists, not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Of course, you don't have to. And he's not a bad assist player, but it's not a bad idea. So it goes points and assists, and then free throw percentage becomes the third hardest category to get. Now, you can find 84% shooters. Contavious Caldwell Pope, 90% shooters. Duncan Robinson who take 0.5 attempts per game, and it doesn't really matter. And I found some very interesting things about free throw percentage later, which I might sidebar off later on. The easiest categories to get at this point, field goal percentage, interesting, blocks, and steals, even though I put a D at the end, which, you know, who doesn't want a D at the end? The other categories, you'll notice here that the two scoring volume categories, two categories which I hate and should not be used, Free throws made and field goals made are the two hardest categories to get after two rounds of picks. And you'll say, why, Josh? Free throws made are a great category because it means the players who get bumped down rankings by free throw percentage, Giannis, LeBron, Zion even, well, that means they just move back up. And I would argue, I do not want to introduce a category like free throws made to make up for the fact that a ranking is presented incorrectly when I can just make sure that that ranking is actually presented in a better way. And the reason I don't like free throws made is because you know what a free throw made is? A point. It's a point. So why, if I make a free throw, do I get a point and then a free throw is made? But if I make a shot, a two-pointer, a contested mid-ranger, a layup, a dunk... I get two points in the points category and no contribution in another category, percentages aside. 
That is why I hate free throws made as a category. I also, by the way, hate three-pointers made as a category. But I understand that that is standard and is hard to break that out of people's brains. But I'm definitely not introducing another category that is literally a one-for-one double dip. That is why I do not want free throws made in there. Field goals made is not quite a one-for-one double dip, but you make a three. You say you make a three in a league and you've got field goals made as an extra category. So you get a three-pointers made, you get three onto your points, and you get a field goal made. Seems outsized, yeah? They get three contributions from hitting a three. Why? Dumb. Anyway, those two become the hardest categories of those alternates to get, then double-doubles, D-rebounds, assisted turnovers, three-point percentage, and offensive rebounds as the easiest one. At pick 31, so we're in the middle here of round three, six picks into round three. Is there any change up at the top? The tally says no. Points are still the hardest to get, and then assists are the second hardest, and then free throw percentage is the third hardest. Okay. Field goal percentage is the easiest. Blocks is the second easiest, and rebounds is the third easiest. Keep an eye. There are things that are going to change a lot. Rebounds, or just spoiler again, rebounds, steals are going to go up and down, up and down. You'll also notice that threes are not in the easiest categories to get at this point. That's intriguing. In terms of your additional stats, it's about the same sort of stuff at this stage. Let's look at the middle of this round, the middle of round um, three. What changes? I'm sorry, this was the middle of round three. Let's look at the end of round three, the beginning of round four, to see what changes. And there are, there are some changes here. Well, there's one. Steals after three rounds, becomes the third hardest category to get. Behind, points and assists. Steals is the third hardest category to get. The easiest categories are the same. Field goals, blocks, and rebounds. And that means that threes and free throws are in the middle. On your other categories, basically the same stuff as well. Free throws made, field goals made, double-doubles, all exactly the same stuff. But that change there where after three rounds, steals... That, so the way that you look at that is that you can tell at that point in the draft that between the or the back end, according to X-Rank, the back end of round three, steals go off the board and free throws don't, free throw percentage doesn't as much. And I'm going to go and have a look and see what sort of players we're talking about in that zone. So we're talking about Van Vliet, steals, Jalen Williams, steals, and then it's DeJounte Murray, steals. All right, so in that six-pick range, three guys who could conceivably average 1.8 to two steals allegedly go off the board, or according to that rank, they go off the board. So while steals might have been sitting there easy enough to get, after those three guys go, it's not it's not as easy. They just, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty obvious. I hope that's obvious, and that's sort of the way that all this stuff works. That's three rounds down. Let's go and have a look now at the rest. But before we do that, Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. The NFL is going, it is rolling. We have seen NBA preseason, NHL season is off and running, and Major League Baseball playoffs are delivering absolute banger after banger every day. So you can be watching these, these games, you can be sitting there on your phone and thinking, I know something. I know that something interesting is going to happen. I know that, yeah, why are the Padres popping on five runs every second innings here? Do I want to take a bet on that? Well, you can go and open your app on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, and check out all of the stats at the same page where you would place those live bets. And if you are a new customer on FanDuel, well, what you can do is you can go and place a $5 bet, win or lose, doesn't matter. You are guaranteed for them to give you $200 in bonus bets. So go and check out FanDuel.com right now to get started. And don't forget to gamble responsibly. All right, so that's four rounds that we've looked at now. We've had 48 picks go off the board. Let's take a look if there's any like adjustment, any change that happens here between those those spots where we were. And the answer is not really. We're sitting there at the beginning of round five. With pick 49, it's the same. It's points, it's assists, and steals as your top three most um, rare stats to get. Your easiest stats to get are field goals, Field goal percentage, sorry, blocks and rebounds, and your other categories are about the same. Free throws made, field goals made, double-doubles, defensive rebounds, sister turnovers, three-point percentage, and offensive rebounds. It is the same. So those of you who have an, a keen eye and acute understanding of this will say we're 48 picks and we're sitting at 49, and field goals, blocks, and rebounds are the most abundant stats in that order. And you've got, I know who gets those stats. It's big men. It's centers. So you go, well, they're, they're abundant, so we've got to make sure that you know we know that they're available. Maybe we don't need to grab them. 
Well, the thing that happens, right, is at that point, we are 48 picks in. You understand what has happened. And now this is where this show becomes important, or, or I hope it's important all the way through. But we look at that and go, well, that's happened. But you have to have in your head that at this point, that will start to change. Because after we go through that X rank, 48 picks off the board, the players that go in the next 20 or so picks who can contribute to those categories, Zion, Siakam, Duran, Gobert, Jarrett Allen, DeAndre Ayton, Nikola Vucevic, Julius Randle, Isaiah Hartenstein, and Yusuf Nurkic. So you reckon that might make a change to the abundance of field goals, blocks, and rebounds? I, I know the answer because I've, I've done this, but yeah, it does adjust what that means. So the most abundant category, or the hardest to get category, still, shockingly enough, is points followed by assists followed by steals. It is the same. But the order of the others has changed. Blocks are, st- are now the most abundant category, which is interesting. But that's because some of the players that went, the Siakams, the Zions, the Vuchers, they're big men who don't necessarily get blocks. Gobert and Claxon that are. But you'll notice that rebounds have moved off that most abundant list. So it's block blocks are most abundant, field goal percentage, and threes. So threes starting to creep up. Rebounds, gone. Rebounds are now in the middle, along with free throw percentage. So we are getting that change. We also notice a change in the other categories section where previously it was free throws made was the hardest to get. Now it's field goals made is the hardest to get. And you're seeing three-point percentage and offensive rebounds switch as the easiest categories to get at the back end as well. But there was a change. Rebounds was at the top of the most, what well, was third in most abundant. Field goal percentage was most abundant. And now it is blocks and rebounds have moved away from there. So it's a movement that is happening. And it doesn't always happen at once, but it does happen. And what you will notice now is if we go through six rounds, we're sitting there at the beginning of round seven, we're sitting at pick 73, we are back to this situation where the most uh, most hardest to get category is points. Second, it is assists. And third, it is now rebounds. So you are 72 picks in. And we went from 24 picks ago, rebounds being you know, available to now them being not available. So that would tell you that in rounds five and six, you need to look at your rebounds because that is where they are all going. The other way you can look at that is like, if you know that all these rebounds are going off the board in that zone, you can either decide to deprioritize them or you can look at getting them earlier. That's another way to go about this. You go, I know that there's going to be a bunch of rebounds fly here. Should I punt assists and get my rebounds in two and three or three and four or one and three or whatever? Another way to look at it. The most abundant stat is blocks followed by field goal percentage and now free throw percentage. He's making a little run. And that's because you get a lot of these weird shooting guard type players that appear in the later rounds. Tyler Heroes, Anthony Simons. So we're 72 picks in. So if you look at the, the X rank number, the guys available is Simons, it's Holiday, it's Ingram, it's Sexton, it's Hero, it's Bogdanovich, it's Poole, it's Murray, it's Michael Porter. All of those guys go in the next 10, 11 picks. Unbelievably high free throw guys, but they are abundant because they are all sitting there ready to go. All sitting there, ready to go. And that that is like important. And you will and you will see that um we talked about we talked about the fact that threes um and free throw percentage can be easier to get. Like those guys are gonna start to go and we are gonna start to see things change. And change they do. At pick eighty five well, the hardest category to get is points. The second hardest category to get is assists. But at this stage, seven rounds in, threes become harder to get. Now, don't worry. Threes are available later. But if you're looking to address threes in round nine and round 10 or round eight, they're not that easy in this area. It's a little bit harder to get and other categories become more apparent. The easiest category to get here, field goal percentage, blocks, and free throw percentage. Even though there's high free throw percentage guys went, you can find them. And part of the reason why blocks are available here, which again, you you don't necessarily think that that is going to be the case. Part of that reason is in the next round of players, Lopez, Pirtle, Mark Williams, Jabari Smith, Draymond Green, all ranked in the next group of 12 players. So they are blockers. They're also players 
who don't hit threes also. So you're also running into some problems at, at times in trying to figure that out. And don't, again, it's just, just little different things that happen. You'll also notice there are other shot blockers that appear later in the draft that can be gotten to with, obviously, concerns about how it impacts your other categories. So that's at 85. At 97, the hardest category to get is points and the second hardest category to get is assists and the third hardest category to get is still threes. Very intriguing. The most abundant category is field goals, blocks, and free throws. What you'll also notice is in the other category section is that offensive rebounds and three-point percentage, they still remain down the bottom, but three-point percentage is now the easiest category to get down in that bottom section. If we want to head now to round nine and have a look at how these things play out, well, there will be a switch here. Points and assists, shockingly enough, are the hardest two categories to get, but then rebounds. This is where the centers basically run out. That's where we're almost out of getting any sort of usable player for centers. Zubats goes, Collins goes, Okongwu goes, Kapala goes, Kessler goes, Lively goes, Porzingis goes. You can still find some blocks. You can still find some field goal percentage, but rebounds are not particularly easy to do at this stage. So it's points, assists, rebounds is the hardest categories to get. The easiest are field goals, blocks, and threes. And now that is because so many centers went off the board, threes now become a little bit easier to get. Understanding all of that, yes? I don't want to go through every single round because I think once again, we get through the first 10 rounds, we can join ourselves into flyer territory and not worrying so much about scarcity and build or punts or anything. Just try and get players you think will pop off. So we're going to finish it after 10 rounds. And this is how it ends up. At pick 121, the hardest category to get is in a complete upset points. The second hardest category in also a boil over assists. And the third hardest is rebounds. Really intriguing because you also know what those categories are. Those categories are the three most stable categories, combination year on year and game by game. That is part of the way that I use my Durant metric, my Durant head-to-head metric on Basketball Monster, is that finding things that give you a level of stability and reliability is important. And these categories are the most reliable and the most stable. And they are the hardest to get really through the draft. I'll talk about that free throw percentage problem that I found a little bit later. The easiest categories to get a field goal percentage, blocks, and free throw percentage after the first 10 rounds. And again, you'll say, why? Who can I get for blocks? Trace Jackson Davis is there. Asar Thompson is there. He's available. Al Horford gets you some blocks. Um, Wendell Carter doesn't really, but there are interesting streaming sort of players that can get you a block, 1.2 blocks. Now, it is hard, it, it, it's all, this is all dependent, right? It, it's hard to find a two-block player, but also what can happen is... Wendell Carter sprains his ankle, completely hypothetical, not like it happened yesterday, it did. Goga Badadze starts and he gets two blocks a game in 22 minutes to begin the season. Don't mind Goga as a last pick if you want to see how, where Wendell is. We're two weeks away from the season, so Goga might start opening night. You can find that. Can you find gigantic field goal guys like Giannis and Zion? No, but you can find some field goal percentage players. You can also find some free throw percentage plays. And that's going to bring me to talk about that last part, the free throw percentage, because we talk about this all the time. And it's a discussion I've had with many of my guests over the last week or so, talking about um, rankings and the importance of, of balanced builds and nine cat rankings and all that sort of stuff. And I rail against that idea. And I make them, I make them say, like, you would prefer to have. Grayson Allen ahead of Paolo Banquero by 100 spots. That's how you would prefer those rankings to look. I say that all the time. And I did an article over on Basketball Monster today, yesterday, sorry. My one-man mock draft, which I do every year. And I use different sort of structures to build each team. And one of them, or two of the teams of those 12, was based on just taking the top player available based on my own nine category projections. And those two teams, on the projected standings, they look pretty good. And they come out incredibly low in points, incredibly low in assists, 
high in turnovers and having advantages in steals, blocks, field goals, and free throws. Which again, you go, they're the categories that no one cares about, Josh. They're the ones you get the hidden advantage. It's good. They're the low volumes. That They're not the sexy categories. You get the advantage. But this is what I found, right? The average amount of free throw attempts in a standard category league. And I don't have a graphic for this because I didn't think I was going to talk about it, but I think I should. The average amount of free throw attempts for a player in the top 160 players or whatever for fantasy, the average amount of attempts is three or 3.1. It's around it's three for ease of us discussing this. It's three attempts per game. Free throws. I would say in a standard 12-man head-to-head matchup, your teams, on average, you'd get 45 games out of it. 45 games. You might play 50. You might play 42, whatever it is. I would say 45 is an easy number to look at for the pure point of calculation. Correct? Correct. The average number that I can see from my projections for a team to be sort of bang average in free throw percentage in a 12-team league is about 80 to 81. About 80 to 81 on an average of about three attempts. That is an average free throw percentage team in fantasy basketball 12 team leagues. Do you see? Okay, we got all that part. We know where I'm going. That's what that is. So we can look at projected standings, which again, I will beg you not to play the projected standings game in your draft and think that you're winning, in, especially if it's based on these categories. And free throws is a really good example here. Steals is another fantastic one. But free throw percentage. All right, we've got these numbers. 81%. Three attempts per game, 45 games in a week, sort of an average team. If you have your team looking like it's a one Z score above average team in free throw percentage, one Z score, one standard deviations, normally it's about 82 and a half. So 82 and a half, which is above 81. So it's about 1.5%. Volume does make it a little bit trickier. That can influence it, but whatever. It's about that mark, right? About that mark. In order to take a team that shoots 81%, 81% on three attempts per game per player over 45 games for the week, which, as you know, is 135 total attempts, in order to turn that from 81 into 82 and a half, again, to turn your team's free throws from 81 to 82 and a half, do you know how many extra free throws your existing players need to make? I'm not talking about adding players into stream, but I'm not talking about someone getting even extra shots. For the sake of the argument to illustrate this, everyone attempts the same amount. You have 135 total attempts for free throws for your week across 45 games. To go from 81 to 82 and a half, your entire team, all 13 players, need to hit a total of two more free throws. That is not two more free throws for the week for each player. That is one player needs to hit one more free throw over a week, and a second player needs to hit one more free throw. And then you have gone from 81 to 82 and a half. It works the opposite direction. If your players miss two free throws over the week, you go from 81 average team to 79 and a half, a team that loses to seven or eight teams. Two free throws. Two. What if I what if I miss out on you know, what what if I go to like and I have a, a bad week and my team was an 81 an 81 free throw team and how did I shoot 77 for the week? That doesn't make sense. I'm an 80 look at my projections. I'm 81. Why am I 77? Why do I lose to every team? How did the Giannis team beat me if I'm an 81 free throw team? Your players, your 13 players, over the course of the week, you need five of those players to miss one free throw that they would normally make. That is it. That is all it takes. And that is why reliance on free throw percentage and field goal percentage, unless you have gigantic gaps, it is so easy to cut to, to, to deal with it. Honestly, that is incredibly small. 109 makes out of 135 is 81%. 104 makes out of 135 is 77%. That's five, five makes difference. 
You want to talk steals? You want to talk steals? If your team projects as a Z-score team of one versus a Z-score team of zero, which is a zero, zero steals team is one steal per game per player, so 45 steals for the week. If your team is a one Z-score team, that is basically 54... Um, well, so, so it's 1.3 steals per player. You go from 45 steals a week to 58. It's 13 steals across 45 games. That is nothing. It's nothing. It's 0.3 steals per player for the week. It, it's nothing. These numbers are like... It's so easy to come back from that. You're at 45 steals from the week, and might this team looks like you're gonna it's gonna kill you because they're projected so high with one Z score advantage to your zero. Easy win for them, right? It's 13 steals in a week. You might think that's not that much. Over 45 games, like it, it is. It's not it's not that hard. These things can be recovered from like so simply. And that is why. Because over the course of the season, those margins are harder to catch up to. But we're not playing Roto. Well, you are, if you are, different story. But you're, you're not. So if your head-to-head team relies on steals, free throws, field goals, even turnovers, it's very hard. And what is the other one thing that we can meld or mold or fold? What do you want to, word you want to use to put into this? The other thing is that the things that vary the most year on year and game on game are steals, blocks, free throw percentage, field goal percentage. So they vary game by game. They vary year on year. And they're the easiest to flip with two extra free throws. So think about that when you're playing the projected standings game. Think about that when you're building your team. That the differences... While over the course of the season, an average number which projects out with a big difference is hard to do. But we're not, we don't play that. We're not tallying our numbers in March and saying, well, I did this all season. Good luck to me. I win. No. You've just got to do it each week. And that is where streaming comes. That is where um, structured moves and ads and drops and starts and sits become important. Make two more free throws. Two misses turn into two makes. And you've got a 1.5 percentage jump across your entire team. Two. Two makes in 45 games. Now, of course, there'll be someone saying, yeah, but it would have been the opposite. You know, they might not miss, make it, and then someone else misses it, then it all bounces around. Yeah, exactly. It is incredibly variable. That is the point. There is immense variability. And all it takes is two shots. And your win that you thought like 80, 82 and a half, that's basically 83. He's at 81, I'll beat him. Easy, it's done. Two shots, two shots. Last two shots of a blowout game might switch, might, might switch that category for you. So if you, and this is not to tell you not to pay attention to percentages, you can. But if you are going to be building your team on the basis of strengths of steals and free throws and field goals, if 81 is average, your team better average 87, 86. If 49% from the field is average, and I think that's about the right number, it's 49 is about average from the field, your team better hit 55. If one steal per game is the average, you better get it 1.5, 1.6. If you want to feel secure in it. Now, you might want to just be on edge the entire week and have everything on a knife's edge and really just hope that every move that you make Waiver wire wise hits the exact perfect thing. Possible. Not a good way. To, not a good way to go about it. I don't think. I would love to hear a feedback on the scarcity part of this, and how you're going to use it, but also that idea, which is stuff that I've presented over at Basketball Monster a lot. It's not fully woven into Durant head to head. It will be. It, be, it will be. Um, it is actually no, that part is it's the categorical scarcity part, which isn't fully wound in, but it does pay attention to it. And it is why when people ask why do you not pay attention to turnovers when ranking or building head-to-head teams, why do you downweight categories? This is why because I don't want to sit there with a team and I look at it and I've put the value of steals and blocks and free throws high 
a, a, just as a straight number, the same as everybody else. And I sit there and I go, well, look, it's easy when I'm, I'm a 0.7 uh, total Z score in that category. Everyone else is at zeros. Like oh, there's one team that's way better. Like, but that's it. I beat everybody else. You, you, you might, but you might not. And it doesn't take much to swing. For example, for points to swing one Z score, one Z score. Steals is 0.3, right? That's what you need. You need 0.3 steals to swing one Z score. Free throw percentage, you need 1.3%, which is two free throws made for a week over an entire team. For points to swing one Z score, you need 5.6, which is, over the course of a week, 252 extra points. 252 extra points across those 45 games. Means every player basically on your team needs to go five points above their average. And that, my friends, is pretty bloody impossible. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Actually, you can go check out Robin Marks from yesterday. He did an actual TED Talk. Go check that out. And I hope that that provides at least something for you to think about. You don't have to follow it. You don't even have to believe it. You just have to know that it's there. And have if you've got the time, check it out. Have a look. Play with the numbers. Have a look at free throws. Just put some calculations down. Three attempts per game. 45 games per week. 81% average. Just have a look how, how easy that switches in a week. You want the numbers for field goals, which are average? Um, field goal average attempts is 128 per player, which for a week with 45 games is 576. More robust for sure. More robust for sure. So if you want to play around them, you've got them there. You can do it. I'll hit this again. I think I've hit it 25 times. Look at the categorical scarcity. And I do hope that you enjoyed that show and what I do want to hear from everybody, but only the sexy people. I want to see a comment and a thumb and a subscribe. We could get to 100,000 subs, but I don't want people to be as ugly as me. I want the sexies. Get in here if you are sexy. Hit the subscribe. Hit the thumbs up. And we'll all have a better day. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Mock off later. See ya.